Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. It's the last week of January and the maple pollen is starting to come in. It is awesome. And hey, check out this queen right here. She's got a yellow dot. And I've got some gloves on because the bees are not appreciating this windy day inspection. There's also quite a bit of larvae down in here. So I don't know how well you can see that. Maybe that angle would be a little bit better. But we've got to get these bees and this larvae back in quickly because it is just in the 50s Fahrenheit and the bees can handle it but the brood cannot so it's only been out for a minute I'd say two minutes max there's no reason to keep it out any longer than that and we're just going to put that back down in this half of May hive so you can see there's two three four five about, I'd say about five frames of bees in this box right here. And I'm fixing to throw another one on real quick. Since that maple pollen is hit, this is the trigger to feed some patties. And this is the rocket fuel infused uh, global patties. So the rocket fuel, I'm going to leave a link down below for that. It's a Canadian product. It is cutting edge nutrition is what it is. There's a lot of products out there that are supplements and different things and we still don't know if they do anything. Uh, this stuff right here is designed based on pollen and what pollen, not just one pollen, but what studying hundreds of varieties of nectars and pollens brings to bees and putting that into a supplement. Global Patties already has a great product anyways. So we are going to Chuck this on in, and we'll come back here in a little while. This is just to supplement the pollen. You're like, Cayman, hey, there's pollen coming in. Why are you doing this? Well, it's Tennessee. We might, our bees not, might not be able to fly for another 10 days, 14 days. This is going to help fill in the nutritional gaps and keep that brood rearing going. This first round of brood is the most critical because these winter bees, once they convert from being winter bees with those healthy fat bodies to nurse bees that are feeding larvae then they their biological clock accelerates big time and so they have so much energy that they can turn into brood so we're going to make sure that we get 100 percent out of that first round and some years it might not even be needed to feed pollen patties but i would say with the, my experience that is more often than not it's beneficial to feed it and so i'm going to smoke these bees down I have this nice box of bees right here. Oh, and that box has got some weight to it right there. That's exactly what I want to see. I'm going to guess that the cluster in this colony is somewhere around eight to nine frames. A good bit of food up top here. And we are going to throw this together. Obviously, this is not the most insulative way to use Apame hives, but this is the way I left it, three deep boxes. It would have been better to have consolidated this down to a double deep, but hive life got in the way. I'm just gonna blame that for everything this year. If there's any something that didn't happen or we're late, it's hive life's fault. I can't blame Laurel. Well, I can once and see how that goes. So let's, let's keep moving on down the line. These uh, rocket fuel patties right here, you can, so you can buy the supplement and then mix it yourself if you don't have the patties. But if you're wanting to buy some patties that have it, um, the only source I know that ships is um, Hillco. And contact John Hill and say that you want rocket fuel. These were patties that we custom made and brought to Hive Life, uh, 22,000 pounds of them. And uh, John Hill bought like three pallets of them. So he, I'm, he's probably got a couple left at least. So. If you're needing some of these, they're great, and the nutrition is just the best. And if you're going to do it, might as well do it good. It was a buck sixty-two at Hive Life, by the way. So another reason to come to Hive Life. Wow, shameless plugs right there. Wow. All right, so we have another little hive right here. Oh my goodness! You see all that leaking out right there? That's a little bit of syrup left over. 
I may or may not have been feeding these beasts syrup in January. Don't do it. I'm, t I'm still testing stuff, but most of these colonies in this yard have been fed on 60 degree Fahrenheit days with two to one syrup. And I've yet to see any issues or losses. It has been dropping down with highs in the low 30s of Fahrenheit, so freezing. And but then we jump back up in the high 40s, low 50s and stuff like that. Most of them took their syrup. Look down into here. See that comb? They have built that out. They have built that out. This doesn't look like the strongest colony in the world. That's probably why they still had some syrup. I am seeing some brood down in there though. Be, oh yeah. Well, strongest colony in the world or not, they're off to the races. Look at that frame right there. Oh, there is a, there is one emerging right here. Already getting some newbies. This is cool weather right here, so we don't want to leave it open very long at all. You can see where that sugar syrup that we fed in January is up here in the top. It was at least two to one thickness. It was probably a little thicker than that. Actually, I know it was a little thicker than that. We took a five gallon bucket, put four something gallons of warm syrup that was about 100 or so degrees, and then we took very hot water and filled the bucket up with another and three quarters of a gallon. And then we mixed it in and then fed the colonies. When you have syrup though, it's easy to mix very thick feed. And so the bees are gonna drink that, they'll be all right. I don't need to see any more. And we are going to throw a pollen patty onto this one. I'm not gonna go down and jump into the next box. I don't see any reason to. There's food in here. And I'm just gonna lay that right across like that. And now that I made a huge mess with all this syrup, we're gonna throw that back on. The nice thing is with these Apame colonies, they're more insulated, so it really helps our bees out in these rough periods of February, March, and January. This is early though. The bees are three weeks ahead of where they were last year. That's just the way it goes some years. I've seen it like this before. I've seen it to where we didn't have maple pollen come in until the third week of February. So, you know, you just don't know what you're going to get as beekeepers. You best be prepared. My thoughts, if it's this early, we still have a lot of potential for cold weather. Hence the pollen patty usage, just trying to smooth things out and help those bees out. It's going to take a lot of energy to build up brood in January and February. So a little bit more TLC is going to be required. I really like this lid lock function right there and then we can lock the boxes down too it's a really nice i'll i'll leave a link down below for that as well just leave all kinds of links so we're just kind of going on down the line here i've got all kinds of a mess i've got to clean up blaming hive life for that too this is the dead out nothing in that one Somebody wants to know why it died. It was mites. That's what it was. And I'm not saying that just guessing. I know I checked. There's, there was mites. Give them a little bit of smoke. Yeah, this one. I'm being a little more careful this time. I've got a little bit of syrup still left in that one. That one, not so much. 
a little bit of beads up here on the top. I really like these uh, frame feeders. I've started going to the two gallons. I've been using the one gallons for, oh gosh, uh, 10 years or so. But I switched to the two gallons. I'm tinkering around with different floats. I really don't care so much about the floats, but one of the biggest issues that uh, beekeepers have with frame feeders is uh, some drowning in there. And so I've tried different sticks, twigs. Honestly, I'm finding like a one stick with a handful or two of straw in there works the best. And frame feeders are pretty cheap, especially if you buy as a bee club. Gosh, you can get these things for like five or six bucks a piece without any um, of the cap and ladders. I don't like the cap and ladders of any brand. The wooden ones, the uh, plastic ones, I don't like any of them. Uh, they're hard to clean out. They're more expensive. They're hard to clean out. And that's an okay amount of weight in there. That's good. I'd like to see a little more weight than that. You can definitely see where the bees have clustered up against this side. There's not hardly any bees over in this area at all. Wow, that looks like a good frame of brood right there, though. So we are going to go right into here. Pop that on over. Oh, come on now. There we go. Yes, sir. Y'all are going to get a pollen patty. Absolutely. Not used to using a J-hook. It's been a while. They got that glued down on the bottom? I think they do. Yep, they did. Would well, you look at that? Oh, there's the queen right there. It is the day of the queen. Every day is the day of the queen in my opinion, but you know, whatever. Some good looking fuzzy bees right there too. This colony's been getting busy. Wow, this is pretty early. And a lot of people like came and, and how, how many inspections should I do a year? How often and how long and all that kind of stuff. Do you see how fast we're going into these colonies? It's, we're not in them that long. This is how we're able to manage a lot more. Obviously, that's a great queen. I'm not seeing any brood issues right there. I'm not seeing any EFB, any snotty looking brood, anything like that. Cluster looks fairly decent. The weight is a little bit light in that top box. It's not like they're going to starve in the next two weeks, but it's it could be where they're going to hold back on their brood wearing of what they should be doing. Excuse me, Laurel. So we're going to give them not only a pollen patty because this is just going to make them burn more of that honey and sugar syrup up that's in there. What we need to do is give them some carbs. One of the things that I like about these global patties, you see the 4% pollen in here, is you have some pollen that helps diversify the uh, nutritional profile. The other thing that I really like is how soft they are. They come in boxes that are loose, and so what I mean by that is if you buy a bunch of pal uh, patties like in a pallet, and I've, I've done this before, uh, from like Man Lake, they, they, they make them very hard and thick patties because they have to be able to stack and that makes sense because if you try to stack about 10 of these on top of each other, it just go all over the place. But I love how soft it is because the bees will eat it so much faster and when you have small hive beetles, that's a big deal. Maybe not so much this time of the year, but consumption rate is important. Where's the smoke? There it is. All right. We're just going to put that right over that brood, and they are just going to wear that out, I promise you. And that's going to help them out quite a bit and get them really going somewhere fast. This is the colony that we're going to have to watch in early March and look for some swarm cells. What we'll be doing is coming in here, pulling them back a little bit. One of the other things that I, I didn't continue to talk about is you know we're getting in we're checking a frame or two of brood checking a frame or two of food done 
Now, I just picked this box up. I can tell by the weight of this that there's probably about three deeps at the most of food in here. There's some down below that's not enough. So we need to put more in this colony. Let me grab some. All right, so at Hive Life, I've, I picked up a lot of goodies at Hive Life. So here is a bag of the Hive Alive fondant right here. And you can throw sugar bricks. It's gonna drop down and get really cold again or I'd just feed some more uh, syrup. I didn't feed these bees near as good as I should have. I shouldn't have to be doing any emergency feeding in January. Not at all. But a lot of times we don't put enough weight on our colonies. What, what, what's enough weight? This whole box. This whole thing should be slammed with food going into winter. But uh, I, I didn't take the time to do it. So I'm going to try to flatten that out a little bit. We are going to cut an X in this. We're going to just peel these sections back and try to get them to stay. And we're going to flip this around and let the bees go at this. And, and this will help a good bit. This is not a very fun to do in January, but keeping a hive of bees alive is great. You know what we could do? There is syrup in here, but what you can do with these Apame feeders is you can take this and instead of having it for the syrup, whoa, you can flip it around and have it to where they can gain access to this area and then you can make it to where they can eat the the candy. Boy, that is a little bit of a mess in there. Do you a favor and get you on out of there. Honestly. Yep, we do strange things here. We do a lot of strange things. So that's obviously not going to sit down like that. Try to flatten it out a little bit. Just what I want to be doing with my bees this time of the year. But this hive with a queen lane like that in January, if that's forward pro if that forward progress continues, it is going to be a nice honey production colony. That's going to make a good honey crop of 80 to 120 pounds, depending on how the year goes for us. We're rooting for those 120 pound yields. And some people have asked me, well, more than a few people have asked me, how does the Apame hive stack up compared to the wooden hives? And I mean, I can see a difference. I mean, there, the insulation does make it to where the bees brood a little bit longer into the fall going into winter, and they definitely start earlier in the season. Those critical periods where there's a lot of flux in the temperatures, that's where the insulated hives shine the most, definitely. Um, and the boxes are extremely rigid. That's one of the things I really like about the Apame design. And you can check them down in the, the link below, but they're USA plastic, which I like that a lot as well. They are made in Turkey. Yeah, that doesn't want to sit down at all. I'll come back and put a cinder block on this. So, sometimes you watch our videos and they're nice and dressed up and everything's fancy and you know I've shaved and got a nice shirt on and Laurel giggles at my bad jokes even in those videos. <laughs> she just raised her eyebrows. However, this is just a video of us going through some hives in January, rambling and talking and showing you some bees and some queens. So I hope you guys are gonna have a great bee season. I'm so looking forward to this one. After hive life, this is, this is my favorite thing to relax. And I hope that you guys just have a wonderful season and thanks for watching our videos. We have a lot more on the way.